regarding the organization of the paper this is fairly standard but as you will see in instructions to authors this may be modified although it's a fairly standard but it may be modified and therefore under normal circumstances usually papers will be organized in the following key terms which you already know and the introduction usually will as we said in the beginning that is last time during research proposal development we said the introduction introduces the problem under study that's the definition of what we are talking about it will also tell us about the current knowledge which is known about that particular problem but also it will tell us what is not known about that problem and this information is summarized from global regional and local point of view and you end up by defining the knowledge gap or research question under study and of course you finish your introduction by saying this study therefore aimed at you put in the objective in a paper you do not put in specific objectives no one is interested to know your specific objectives we just want to know your main objective and we are also assuming that when you describe or put in your main objective in the result section you are going to present all the information which you think helps you to provide evidence of the answer to that main research question which may come from any of the, of the objectives here i have communication from the editor which I actually received today this is not my paper it is a paper that i reviewed about a week ago it is from global health action this is a journal and usually what they do in this particular journal when you send your article there as we shall see later you have to register in their system you send the article and when they receive it you get an automated message to say they have received your article and they send it out to reviewers and when they send it out to reviewers the reviewers will send their comments through the attachments within the website so when they asked me to review this article this was about a week ago they sent me this information today regarding that article that I reviewed and they said a decision has been made on article ZGHA 20170161 this article was about rebuilding research capacity in fragile states the case of a Somali Swedish global health initiative they presented all the reviewers comments incidentally for this article there were four reviewers and you can see the pages about three pages of comments because when you receive three pages of comments then you feel very sad because you think this is now a big problem but you can sit down and start acting on each of the comments and now my point here regarding the introduction the only thing i wanted to say is among the requirements that they indicated is to request the authors to write what they call paper context what does this mean they are saying this section is a short paragraph maximum 75 words that helps the reader to understand where you started from that is what is already known about the problem what the paper adds to the topic that is what is new and what are the implications of the paper that is what action needs to be taken you cannot say much in 75 words therefore it is important to choose words and phrases very carefully do not use bullet points do not use abbreviations do not use any symbols simply compose a clear text that contextualizes the paper so do you see this very clear instruction but you can see the work which is behind this clear instruction because having to write something in 75 words that summarizes all what is required that is pretty a little bit tough challenging but it can be done so coming back to our introduction i'm saying this because some of the points that you are going to use to write the context of the paper will come from the introduction and therefore we expect the introduction to be precise enough to tell us what is known about the introduction of the problem what's known about the problem what's not known and you define the knowledge gap and at the end of the day you end up by stating your main objective what you want to do to address the problem that will be the introduction and the materials and methods this section will describe the details of how the study was actually executed to enable the reader to judge the validity of your conclusions materials and methods is a very important section that you must write very precisely because the findings you are going to report about will be judged based on your methodology if you said i'm going to adopt probability sampling 
and you are imagining that you are going to have a representative sample all of a sudden you change and do non probability sampling purposive maybe then in your calculations you use all the statistics that are assuming a probability sample what do people say they throw away the entire paper because you cannot use statistics that are based on a probability sample while you used a non probability approach that would be wrong and therefore people are going to read your methodology and judge the validity of your findings on the other side you must describe the details of what you did in a chronological order you have to describe what you did in a detailed way that will enable somebody else to repeat what you did without necessarily having to consult you we do not mean that you must use excessive words that's why the writing skills here are very important you must select your words be precise you summarize what you did but yet detailed enough for somebody to repeat your study without having to call you you may wish to include some headings if you think they will be important to make people understand maybe you had some laboratory procedures so you must put in some subheadings laboratory procedures definition of terms all those things you have to include the purpose here is to make the reader understand what you actually did and of course including subheadings you have to follow what your target journal instructs you to do should you include things that are not acceptable to the target journal because the reviewers are going to follow what is supposed to be presented and as we said during research proposal development if that specific journal asks you to put in specific subheadings those subheadings are useful during the review process because people put in some scores they know that for example if we describe the methodology there has to be a section about methodology so what happens regarding results do not start the section by showing tables or figures you don't just start the result section by seeing a big table you must describe things using text the first paragraph has to be text and later you start by describing your study preparation whether you thought there is anything which is weird that was encountered sometimes people talk about the response rate the response rate is important because it helps the readers to judge whether the individuals you were supposed to recruit in your study you actually got them and whether you encountered any problems and how these problems may have contributed to your findings and therefore you continue by giving the main findings in statements before going into much detail and later you give detailed analysis according to the objectives you must observe the instructions to the authors as regards how many tables and how many figures you may include in your manuscript some people say you can include up to a maximum of four tables but somebody is going to ask how huge should my table be i have seen tables that go over three pages that is one table so there has to be a definition of how big should your table be and all this appears under instructions to authors and also how many figures are going to include it also depends on what is being instructed and the issue here is usually the space is limited in most journals they will allow you a lot of pages if they think what you're presenting is extremely interesting otherwise they just tell you cut 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 decrease there is no space even if it is a new journal it doesn't mean that they are not conscious of space no they are also conscious of space and therefore you have to ensure that you have written down what is supposed to be written and while writing the result you may also include information on how various variables were defined this is something which is debatable some people may wish to define certain variables in the methodology which is acceptable because it goes very well with the methodology by saying a household was defined as or blood pressure measurement was done according to such and such and such a method then you give a reference all those definitions are supposed to be included either in the methodology section or in the results section and by giving the least important results in summary the results section must show the evidence of what you found in that particular study so that when the readers see your results they may be convinced that what you are talking about is actually what you wanted to present after you have gone through the results you may wish to go to the discussion and the purpose of the discussion is to relate your findings to the knowledge that exists you relate your findings to the knowledge that exists and therefore we are saying the discussion must assess all the evidence and give the answer to the research question and the study that's why in most circumstances the discussion starts by 
echoing the results, the main findings. In this study, we found out that there is no relationship between cigarette smoking and diabetes mellitus among people aged 35 to 45 years. You start by echoing the main findings. Then you start now relating your findings to the existing board of knowledge. And therefore, in the discussion, you'll find out that people will be referring to what other people found so that you can see whether your work has made any contribution or maybe it didn't make any contribution. And also, in the discussion, you may wish to assess the validity of your work, meaning the methods that you used, if you think there's anything which you think was not very right and may have influenced your results, you may wish to talk about it. If you don't talk about it and other people see that there is a situation that affected your results, but you never saw it, they will think you don't know about it. While in fact you knew about it, and therefore if you knew about it, it's better you tell us about it and also tell us how this affected your findings. Do the results reflect a true situation? This is what we are saying in the beginning. You go out, you find out that this is a finding which is out of this world. Is this the actual situation? If you are convinced that this is the actual situation, according to your belief in the methodology, that methodology was very valid, then you say so, which is just okay. You compare with the previous work, and comment on the significance of your findings. Discuss the contribution to knowledge, but also you may wish to point out the new lines of study. Summarize your discussion into a conclusion. And in your conclusion, write down the conclusions and ensure that your conclusions emanate from the findings of your work. This is something which happens. Somebody does a study or conducts a study. They develop a very good write-up they write a very good discussion and when they conclude, they conclude things which do not emanate from their findings. They have been trying to convince people that they have done something very good while in fact they did never did anything good because they are concluding based on somebody's findings. Same like recommendations. Some people have done a good piece of work, they develop recommendations that are not based on their work. How comes you are recommending based on somebody's work? That's not your work. Even if you are study findings only lead you to write one recommendation. It's enough. Why do you have to write many recommendations? You don't have to have many recommendations. One recommendation is enough. So, in summary, we are assuming that at that time, you have written something what you would call coming close to the first draft of your work. You have something already under those subheadings that you are supposed now to improve. In the beginning, I used to think people on PhD studies are given four years in most cases, to publish only four papers. Then I was imagining, this is too much time. How comes you are given four years to publish only four papers? Then you write a cover story, which is a summary of the four papers that are focusing on a particular subject, and you come up with a thesis. Then I was saying, these people are given a lot of time. People have tried to go through all these processes and think maybe an average of four years could be enough for all those papers. And the reason is, in order for you to sit down, concentrate, write and have a focused mind, it can take you a day or so. Just write the introduction. But one secret is, you have to put up a plan for yourself. You may agree that I develop only one paragraph per day. Because if you develop one paragraph per day, it means in a period of four months, you have the entire paper. I'm trying to say this because sometimes it may not be very straightforward. Because you have to think back and forth. You have to think back and forth. Sometimes if you concentrate too hard, in a single day you can finish the introduction. But that will be a draft. Then you have to read it over and over again. Then there's a time when you're supposed to leave it to chill. You put it in a refrigerator so that it can chill. While you pretend as if you're not seeing anything. You have a break. So that when you go back again to read it, you can have a fresh mind. Therefore, as far as the writing procedures are concerned, in that initial write-up, you add in the tables, you add in the illustrations, you describe them, you are trying to enrich your article. So, you add in the tables, you add in the illustrations, and you describe them. 